My parents were two pretty different individuals. My mom was very outgoing. She was a people person. She was a very, very strong extrovert and she was a verbal processor. She was quick. You asked her a question, she didn't just give you one answer. She gave you lots of answers and she was a big talker. Uh, you'd ask her a question and like 10 minutes later, you'd have an answer and we'd be like, mom, the Reader's Digest version. My dad, on the other hand, is a very pensive introvert. He's a thinker. I kind of think of him like a percolator. He has to sort of process and ruminate. And with him, I joke that as a kid, I'd ask a question or even as a teen or a young adult and I'd want an answer, kind of like my mom, right there. And instead my dad would wait because he was thinking, he was processing. And I would get impatient, I'd ask another question and that would stall the process because then he would need to think and process on the second one. Having two very different parents helped me learn we are very different people. And just like my parents were different, often people in the church are different. I still have lots to learn, but one thing I know is that a lot of us are thinkers. We wanna be able to read something, see something, hear something, think about it, question it, maybe write things down. And so, this Sunday, as we anticipate our charge conference and being together as a body to talk about issues facing our church and make some decisions that affect us, uh, I know some of you are thinkers. And if I just put a piece of paper in front of you and say, okay, read this right quick and we're gonna vote, it's gonna be too much too fast. You need to be able to read it, to hear it, to see it, to question it, to push on it, uh, to process it. And so with this devotional, we are offering you a chance to think about these things. We'll have ordinary business that is part of the life of the church, voting on our nominations and our membership lists and the pastor's salary. But we also have two key items of business that we want to attend to. Our church council could have decided on these things and simply moved forward on your behalf. And we felt that they're big enough that they warranted discussion from us as a body. The first is a letter of lament and apology. It reflects the general church's decisions at General Conference 2024 to remove the restrictive language against our queer siblings within the church. We wanna celebrate that decision and acknowledge that the church over the years with its restrictive language and practices has done incredible harm to our LGBTQIA siblings in the church and outside of the church. We also recognize that even though the church has, the denomination has pulled that restrictive language, there are still injustices in front of us, both within the United Methodist Church and outside of it. As a congregation, or at least as a church council, we don't believe it's enough to say we're open and affirming. We believe we have to fight for justice and help people to have equality in every setting of their life. The letter that's attached here that you have a chance to read through and we'll have a chance to discuss on Sunday talks about those things. We hope that to be something we can affirm as a church body and share with our community, sharing our lament and our great and, and our regret, as well as our hope for what can be. The second piece will have more time for discussion and it pertains to our little free pantry. I've shared prior to this and other devotionals and written material that we're at a pivot spot, both with the little free pantry and Columbia uh, Elementary and our outreach that can no longer happen as that school is closed and with our ESL program. The most pressing before us relates to the little, little free pantry. And so we have a proposal written by a strategic team for big picture planning, reviewed and discussed by our little free pantry team and now before you. We hope that you will take time to read both of these documents before we meet on Sunday and that when we gather, we can have an informed discussion where those of us that needed to think and process first have had a proper chance to do that and where we can come together as a community of faith to look ahead and see what God is doing and what God is calling us to do. I hope you'll take time to read these things. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out and then we'll talk and we'll ask together on Sunday. Take care, friends.